So we have here on the 100 and over a little over 100, kind of 101 that I blessed, yes. but a little over 100 people uh, that we have here today coming from three different places, exactly. most of them from here, yes. and, uh, and from this village of Boko. Yes. And, uh, but we have here the lady coming from across the river and on the roads. Takes a, takes you how many hours to come here, madam? Two hours. Yeah, two. And how do you come? What, what, what means? I mm follow -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the local road. By bus. Okay. By bus. And cross the river. Yes. Right, right. But the two hours to come, and and also you can explain the story of. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and what is your name? Francisca Mary. Francisca Mary. So Francisca Mary of the village of Zakibia. How do you say? Zakibia. Zakibia. <laughs> what is it? Zak? Zaki. Bien. Zaki. Bien. 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 Okay. Like, well, Zakibia. Okay. So from Zakibia, uh, she she had uh, Francisca Mary had Father Samuel come to her village to say the mass he said i want a vatican one priest to say the mass <laughs> father came yes. and then the police came right yes and what happened with the police say the story that happened that day the, the police come to arrest father samuel that is a false father so i tell the police men that i'm the one that invite father samuel to my house so I'm, I'm not here longer to Vatican one, Vatican two again, and I'm Vatican one. So I am the one that invited him to my house. I want him to celebrate the mass for me and the the people that be around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so you, you, and how did the police react to that? And the police doesn't react as they see the truth about the mass. So they just need them for the for the Samuel to bless them. And they arrest the the people that brought the police that they are going to detain the people. Unless they will they will pay ten thousand for the fuel that they, they carry them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the police you were there, Father. Yes, I was there. <laughs> the police came to arrest Father Samuel. Yes. yes. But then uh, Francisca Mary said, I called for the Vatican I priest yes. to say the Mass for me. Yes. And then the police recognized that the people had only caused uh, problems, bringing the priest far, police far away from their, uh, their station. Yes. So they told the people that filed the complaint, you must pay 10000 yes, for nice. our journey out and back, <laughs> or we will arrest you. <laughs> That's you right? They will detain. Detain. Wait detain. For, for Father Philip to come and pay the 10000 before they will detain. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's a noble sort of priest that was right. in charge of the parish. Send them to come and arrest me. Right. So now <coughs> they're going to pay. They're going to pay before they can release them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And when did this happen? This is how long ago? That was, that was last month. Yes. Mm. Last month, yes. And then, so now that you yeah. have some faithful who would like to go to Mass at your place with the true Vatican I priest, right? Yes. Yes, and then, uh, and so now they cannot stop you, right? You will not allow it, right? Yes. So then you come here two hours and you're asking for us to hopefully be able, we can build a chapel and to give more of the Masses and help the people to grow in the faith. That's good, yes. right? And then, so that's the village of, oh, Zakibian. 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 Okay, of Zakibian. And then now the others, the, the Anna village, what's it? Anna. 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 Now the Anna village, so the people can stand up, Anna village. One, and this is um, Zakibian. Yeah. Oh, you have a good little crew there, right? Yes, and this is the chapel. Mm -hmm. This we have to have the chapel outside. Yes. Yeah. This is an altar. Oh, very mm. good. Mm. Very good. She made an altar. Very mm. nice. Mm. Very good. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to see. I'm a missionary priest. Yes. yes, yes. And uh, you know, it's, uh, I one of the pains 
of the last year and a half is with this idiotic, evil pandemic, I have been held back from the missions. And, uh, you know, so I feel like, even though this is my very first time in Africa, I feel like I'm back at home. <laughs> so, it's very beautiful to be yeah, back. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, and so, so, but it, now the other, the third village, towards the, the one 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 <laughs> we'll work and one of them they then and uh, explain your story and how you come here and from one minute to here it is like an hour journey that is on bus and when we trek we use like three and a half hours yeah. Yeah. usually most of us we use to trek because of lack of means right so most of the people on a village they walk three and a half hours on foot one way to come here because they can't afford the, was it 50, how much is it? 250. 250 Naira. 200 Naira, which yeah. is uh, basically about 45 cents. <laughs> yes. So the 200 uh, Naira to come here, they can't afford the 50 cents to come here. But then it's also 200 to go back, right? So it basically costs almost a dollar yeah. to go here and come back, about 90 cents. They can't afford the 90 cents, so they walk three and a half hours one way to the mass. Yes, you, and then three and a half hours to go back. And then the three and a half hours go back, so there's seven hours walking. And uh, so you try to come at least for the Sunday masses and the main masses. Yes. How many of you make the walk? trek from your village of uh, Awanane to here? <laughs> like how many came tonight? Huh? How many of you came tonight for the Mass? Okay, like this, the, today on? Yeah, today, yeah. yeah. Okay, we are up to like 15. 15, very right, good. And you all came came together, right? Yes, yeah. my yes, Lord. Right. And then, uh, and then you'll stay tonight, then you'll leave in the morning, or? Yes, yeah, that's what yes. And then, uh, so that's, uh, so you got seven hours of walking? Yes. It was uh, good. Like sometimes on Sunday morning masses, we come Saturday evening. Saturday evening. Saturday evening. Right, right. Yes, yeah, then we sleep over after the mass on Sunday morning, then we started going back. Right, right. Yeah, yeah so there are the people, as you see, this is the history of our church for 2,000 years. Yes. Remember that... <laughs> The beauty of our church, Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, made the church for everyone. However, it's especially for the poor. And our Lord Jesus Christ has a special love of those of us that are struggling. He does. He always loved the poverty. And that somehow it's easier for us to get to heaven when we don't have too much stuff. If you want to become a bad person, all you have to do is become rich. You become very rich, and all of a sudden, you're finished. You know, in America, uh, and when I was in the seminary, there was a man, he was a poor man, and he was the first one to win the $30 million lottery. Wow. He won $30 million, and he was in La Crosse, Wisconsin, only 30 minutes away from where I went to the seminary. He won the lottery, got the money, and after one month, he committed suicide. He wrote a note. He said, "What well, before I won the lottery, I had many friends, and I could trust people. I was getting married, and I was happy. But then I won $32 million. Now I have no idea who my friends are. Everybody just comes, and the girl wanted to, he ended up not getting married because the girl just wanted the money. His whole life fell apart. And he said, this money killed my life. And then he hung himself. So the uh, uh, money is the root of all evil. And also somehow it drags us down. You know, somehow it drags us down. And uh, so, but God gives a special strength to us when we're able to offer up something for our faith. So you're walking for seven hours, eight hours, and the sun is coming down and burning you to death, and then the rain is coming down, right? right. Uh, and it, this is all a very good blessing. God counts every step, every step. 
Now, you know, there was once a, a, a hermit back in the time of the monks and back in the desert fathers. And he lived far from the river and he used to have to walk to the river, get the water and walk back. It took forever. And it shortened the time of his praying. So he realized, I am a hermit. I need to pray more. So he got up and he started walking to a place to be closer to the river. He started walking and he heard one, nobody there, two, three, nobody there. He said, who is it? He said, it's your guardian angel. What are you doing? He said, I'm counting your steps. <laughs> Why are you counting my steps? Because every step you take the river to have to get the water, which is a sacrifice that makes you have to work every day, I count every step. So guess what he did? He moved further from the river. <laughs> he moved further from the river so he could walk further to get. So the angel counts every step. And this also helps the church. Because remember, you can't be all selfish, right? True. You want your bishop, you want your pope, you want your... We, we, of course, you know, we, all, we all want those things. But you must remember, we must help others. You don't, you don't want Father Samuel to be here every day, all day. <laughs> you don't want that. Because he has to take care of other sheep. And you don't want him to be held back from the other sheep. That's true. You want him to help you as long as he's also helping the other sheep. And then there's blessings. That's why it's good that you have to walk a long ways and then walk all the way back. God blesses you, but he doesn't just bless you. He's giving strength through your sacrifice for the Pope to convert. I'm giving strength for, you know there's people who are trying to divorce their wives, who don't want to stay with their husbands, thinking about having an abortion, and you're taking a step, and another step, and another step, and it gives the grace for them to say, no, I'm not going to have that abortion. It gives the grace to the Pope, one day there'll be enough steps, and the Pope will say, All right, that's it, I'm going to obey heaven, finally. Amen. See how you're never alone in your in your work. Yes. Remember, you're part of the whole mystical body of Christ, and that's why you don't want to just build a chapel for yourself. You want a chapel, of course you do, right? Yes. But you want it for all your people, and not just your people, but the other people of the world too. You know, that's one of the evils, you know, this 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 present. You know, the Pope Francis said, I'm shutting down the Latin Mass. <laughs> They had a Latin Mass over here. And then they don't have a Latin Mass there. And so some people are saying, well, he didn't shut down my Mass, so I'm okay. I'm really sorry he shut down your Mass, but I don't care, because I got my Mass. Does that sound like something a saint would say? No, it isn't, is it? So we must care about the other people. It's got to be in our hearts. It's part of being uh, Catholic, right? Catholic means universal. Yes. So you do what you can. You try to help and save your people. Like you make the long two-hour journey here very difficult. You stand at the police and beat up the police. That's good. Right? <laughs> so we have Moses to give the yes. vote of, of thanks. And okay, thank you. Right. This is his chapel. Right. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Welcome, my lord. Right. <laughs> Before giving a vote of thanks, I want to do an introduction. Yes. This house you are sitting in is a family house. Right. When I was preparing people to accept the traditional Latin Mass, I had Father Patrick then alone, but there was no place. Mm -hmm. So this family, when I was looking for a place to start this traditional Mass, they offered to give a place, this chapel that you sat inside. Yes. As this brother said, they were very few, they were very, very few. Mm -hmm. And this is the owner of the house. Mm -hmm. His name is Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph, very good. I am Joseph. <laughs> you know what is, you know what is uh, very appreciated? Jo you know what Joseph means? Joseph means he shall increase. That's why I keep, you know, increasing. <laughs> but, but that's a very beautiful blessing. Do you see how it takes a real person to make the sacrifice? 
And I also know, I know already, you don't have to tell me, I know there's people here that are very angry with you yes. for allowing the Father to say Mass, right? Yes. Even the diocese. Yes, the diocese. Um, but yes, and this, if you've been that strength, we really appreciate that. That's how Christ is planted. <laughs> this is the wife, Christiana. Christiana, very beautiful. What of nine children? Nine children, that's what we need. Army of Whoa. children. <laughs> <laughs> very good. My Lord, happiness when, and children. Right? When we started this, almost a, apart from that map of this station, almost all the stations are the ones that initiated and we started them. And I would have gotten more. But now, like I told you when we were in Otuko, Father Sam is alone. Right. I didn't blame Father Patrick because he's having a lot of people there to care for. Right. Mm -hmm. But going out to these places, Father Sam is only alone. Mm -hmm. Just as he's explaining to you the distance from here to that. Oh, by the way, speaking of which, <clears throat> Father Samuel's schedule <clears throat> is very much like our old society, St. Pius X schedule. So, if you could explain, Father, your schedule, yes. how uh, in the morning you say your Sunday schedule. Yes, sir. Okay, so my Sunday schedules are like this. Um, if I'm if I'm at Vandek and Boko, Boko and Kassana Diocese for this week, I will have Mass on Saturday night at Vandekia by 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. Then, on Sunday by 5 a.m., I will have Mass for them. Then come down to Boko at two hours journey with bad roads and have the mass by 8 a.m. So this is Boko here, the second yes, place. Exactly. second place. So 10 p.m. mass in Vendiki. Vendiki. Saturday. 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 Yeah. Yes. Vendikia. And then the Sunday. second mass Sunday morning, also 5 a.m. 5 a.m. And the second mass here, two by hours journey two hours over journey. the bad roads. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Yes. And then? To a two post. And that is, uh, that'll be the third Mass the that third day, mass, yes. and that'll be how many hours to there? That's about two hours, 30 minutes. Again. The third Mass is my mother's house, because yes. of she's old. Right. So I give her the privilege to have the Mass. Right. Then, I will now have Mass for the sisters and the parishioners of Utuko by 5 p.m. and benediction. Right, okay, so that'll be the fourth Mass. Yes. So that each Sunday, Father Samuel's uh, Abba, Father Samuel Abba says yes. four Masses. And Father's uh, uh, history of tradition, you can explain, Father, how you came back to, when you were ordained, yes. when you came back to the Latin Mass, and your exactly. journey to Australia, and so on. Yes. Maybe you can explain, Father. So, so I, I was ordained in 2003, 25th October, and I informed the Bishop that this traditional Catholic Mass would soon come out in full force. Then he went to Michigan in America, 2003, and asked the people that um, there's a priest in his house that want to lend the Mass. So I don't know the specific group that he went to, but it must be a fraternity group. Right. And so that's uh, some Peter. Right. So he, he thought I was too young, because I was into a C plus. I was too young to travel out to go and see the mess in, in America. So he refused me. So when Sumerum Pontificum came up, I asked for a sabbatical leave, which he refused to grant. And sabbatical leave was to go and study under the societies in Charles the mm -hmm. So he refused to grant it, and I said, okay, I'm still going to go. So Bishop Fel uh, Bishop and um, Father Nelly, Father yeah. Nelly and Father yeah. Duvigier right. came down and we discussed with the bishop and he said no, you can go, but he started persecution. So for four months I was granted. Mm -hmm. So in September I travelled down to South Africa, stayed with the societies and the ten brothers in South Africa Rudiport. Then now went to Australia, I uh, spent eleven months there, six months there plus the, no eleven months there, seven months there plus. The four months in Africa, making one game. So the right. new sooner called the bishop that and the place this in Australia where you were was, was Goldburn, yes, the, the seminary. The seminary. And at that the time, Gregor, Father Gregor, Father was Gregor, the Father Robinson, yeah. Father Cortes, Father Fluga Junior, yeah. and Father Doran came to give us retreats right. and so on and so forth. So it was wonderful, cool environment. There are some Nigerians there too who are also studying mm -hmm. in the place. <laughs> so the new sooner called. Now, Father Gregor was having discussion with my bishop at my back without even telling me. 
Right. Yeah. Huh. So, Frank, he was this, discussing with your bishop. He took, yes. Why was Father Griego, the yeah. superior of the seminary, who hates the Novus Ordo bishops in theory, why was he talking to your bishop here in Up Algeria? to now, I do not know. No. I said, you were communicating with my bishop without telling me? No. You know what I'm saying? I was really, I was really sad. So Bishop Fele came around and I explained everything to Bishop Fele, the nature of the apostolate in Nigeria. Because I led some faithfuls to the traditional Catholic mass. When I left, they stopped going to them. It's as good as I said, they abandoned them. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so that's what happened. So when I came back to come and see the new seal, um, they felt that I betrayed them by coming back home to come and meet the new seal. You know, because I felt that I could explain myself to the, I could explain myself to the new seal better. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it all, it never worked out for myself. For one good year, I kept us to the traditional Catholic mass and there was no support. You celebrated the mass here in <laughs> in Otuko. No, Otuko. Yes. But there are just a few people, and, a few people and, and, and the, the you did not get support from the society. Yes, the nothing. The tent or yes, no support. Uh, and that would be around the year 2000 and 2012. 12. Okay. Yes, yes, 2012. So it was like that. Then after one year, 2013, the bishop now asked that I shoot. <laughs> I should take this parish. Work. Right. So I worked in the St. Mary's, then worked in the cathedral, then after that um, I felt I could do some good by restoring tradition, right. but it never worked out fine. Right, fine. you were trying to restore tradition within the Nozoro, yes. and you found that this is not working. not working. But I kept contact with the societies and powers of the tent. I right. kept contact with them, I couldn't meet them, I couldn't discuss with them. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> They were saying, just come out, come out, come out, come out. Mm -hmm. So as God will have it, when the Vishen came to go to Lagos to go and take a traditional Catholic group in Lagos, I, of course, I made up my mind. And that was 8th of September, 2020. Mm -hmm. But at this time, I tried to strengthen everything possible. I was not giving in the hand. I submit my mass as best as possible, but it was not working. Right. But every blessed day, I kept celebrating traditional Catholic mass. So some days I will have traditional Catholic mass in the morning, very early, then go and get the to do mass in the main parish. Yeah. So, thank God, with that I was able to 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 to, to keep the faith. And right. on the eighth of September, that was the last time I celebrated the church, not the Novus Ordo Mass till yeah, today. Because you recognize that this is just it's not going to work. It's, it's impossible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, not so it's work. too evil. Yes. And then since then, you've been fighting directly and completely against the exactly. The then you established the Paris of Tupco, which yes. is very small. Yes, yeah, very small. Very small. But now, with all these places, you probably have about more than two hundred faithful. Yes, about two hundred faithful. Yeah, about maybe two hundred and fifty yes. faithful in the yes. four regular parishes. Exactly. But actually, there's. And then there's a fifth one potentially here. This would be number five, right? Number five, yes. Zakibian. Yeah, Zakibian. Yes. And it would be number five. So we tried to work on that. Yes. And then, of course, looking for help, you know, and so on. Whereas Moses, I've been in contact with Moses for the last three years? Three years? Two uh, years. Two years. Two years. Is it four years? Yes. Four it years. was four years. Because I've been trying to come here for so long. I've been trying to come to Nigeria for, yeah, maybe five years. Five years. Five years I've been attempting to come here, and I've actually been in contact with the Nigerians, many of you, the entire time. Yes. And especially the last three years, I'm going to make it this year, I'm going to make it this year, and it fell through every time. But yeah, I guess it's been maybe four years that we've been... 2015. Oh, six years. Yes. <laughs> six years. Yeah, so I'm losing track of the time. Exactly. Yeah, because it was so... Uh, so we've been in contact the last six years, and also trying to help develop the, the exactly. missions and support the missions from behind, yeah. and from America. But then also, then Father Francis came in 2017, right? Yes. Yeah. 2000, I think 2017. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then, and then now Father Francis is once again officially with the Saint Science Content Marian Corps, and we can then establish that our first, our first priory outside of Kentucky will be here. Wow. This will be the first priory. Outside of Kentucky, because we don't have anything, right? So we have our priory and our seminary together, and then with Father Francis and the priory here, we the very first Society of St. Pius Marian Corps priory outside of Kentucky, and also be outside of the United States yes. here in Nigeria. And then also, and so it is, you also understand, remember that our people in America, just like here, 
we have a small group of people here, another small group over there, and they sometimes feel like they're all alone. When they see you, you must understand, when they see you on the computer and they see you at the Mass, you really, really encourages our people in the other parts of the world. You've got to understand that. Because sometimes they feel like we're all alone. When they see, though, there's Father Samuel. He's been like an old-fashioned society priest. <laughs> you know, I, you know, and he's, you know, and he's, he's going insane to four masses on the Sunday. He can't do that forever, right? But he's doing what he can. Uh, fa also, Father Patrick, doing the best. He's doing well, doing good. And Father, Father um, uh, Francis, Father Francis, all of them in absolute poverty. They yes. don't know whether they're going to make it to the next circuit, how they're going to do it. But Father Francis is going around and all over, going all over Nigeria. He massive journeys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so the, we're building up a flock of Christ. And there's a few faithful here and a few there. And then it's picking up. And this is the future of the whole Catholic Church. Amen. Yeah. It's the future of the Church. And remember that 2,000 years ago, that's how it all began. Okay. Right? And, uh, and so... The, uh, because we have to have that true faith without compromise. And we, we love a Holy Father, but we're not going to be involved in His compromises. So that's why Fritz like Father is one of many priests. I met another priest in America. He was weeping, weeping, weeping. Because he disliked Father. He tried his very best. He said the new Mass with his fingers like that. He preached about hell. He preached about confession. He refused communion for one year because his faithful did not go to confession. He says, you don't go to confession, I don't give you communion. <laughs> and then he, he preached retreats and he made them all go to confession. He did, all those things. he did everything right. It didn't work. It didn't work. Because even though he was trying his best, he was using the poison of the new mass. Exactly. It's like Father, trying his best. You could tell. And you only have to admit when you're celebrating it, Instead of feeling good, you feel guilty. Guilty, constantly. Right. It, was a, it, was a, it was hell, my Lord. Yeah. Hell on earth. So, compromise upon compromise. Because also remember, you're going you're gonna to help other priests. Because there are many priests on the inside who exactly. are, they're human beings. Priests are human beings too, right? Yeah. You know, we, we have to eat, we have to have a place to sleep, and we need to survive too. And you know how many priests are not with tradition because they think they can't survive? Yes. <laughs> it's interesting, when I was a little boy in the 1970s, that was the beginning of the, of the tradition. My old pastor, Father Hannafin, was sitting there at the table, and we fed the priest and he, every day at our family. And we had His the mass there. The priests. And many priests, over 100 priests would visit our family. I feel very nuts. Over 100 would visit Father Hannafin. I was a little boy sitting there at the table. <laughs> and I remember... All those priests, I remember one thing, Father Hannafin, because he was an old Irish priest, and he was not really a deep theologian. <laughs> so he didn't give deep theological arguments. And I remember one thing he used to always say, the priest, Father, Father, how can I stop saying, the new, should I stop saying the new Mass? And then he would get his Irish temper up, and he'd say, stop saying the new Mass. Stop saying the new mass. It's causing souls to go to hell. Stop saying it. <laughs> and you know, I saw some priests weep. Oh. I saw some priests go into shock. I saw some priests look down and be silent. None of them disagreed with them. Not one said, no, it's not causing souls to go to hell. They all knew he was right. You see? And then I heard many of those priests when I was a little boy. I remember those priests so well. They were standing there, Father, where's my rectory? How can I survive? You know, of my pension, my medical insurance. How am I going to survive? I'm going to be in the streets. And Father Hannafin would simply say, Father, I don't know of one priest who stood for the truth of the Mass and starved. Confirmed. Yes. This is 11 months with me now. See, you know, for one day. and uh, yeah, there were always uh, rough periods. There's periods when we're afraid. But that's because we're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I experience the same thing. I'm sure the Father does too. A lot. Sometimes I'm thinking, you know, how are we going to. Like, one of my helpers, he's actually very good. 
You know, say, look, we don't have the money to pay the electric bill. I don't have the money to fly the death circuit. I don't know how to feed these guys. And he would get mad at me. What are you worried about? Mm. And he always points in the corner. We have a big statue, big right. picture of our lady of yeah. Guadalupe, right? Yeah. And he says, she'll take care of it. Mm. <laughs> and every time. And guess what I still do? I still worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's called stupid. <laughs> but the fact is that that they, they, I saw so many of those priests, and now now it's 50 years later, and I'm hearing the same words that when I was a child. So that, you know, how am I going to survive? What am I going to do? And the priests are human too. Like, yeah, they, they, they're not confused. They're worried. They're disturbed, right? But you can help them. I say, no, Father. We're all poor. We can be poor to this together, right? <laughs> and then, and don't worry. We'll, we'll find a way. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure you get food. We'll make sure there's some way to survive. And we do want to build a big church. But we can have mass in this place. We can have mass there. We can, we'll build a little hut. It's magnificent. In India, one of my regular chapels was uh, a Nipah hut. It's the same as your this these roofs here. This. Okay, yeah, Tash roof. Yeah. Tash, there's Nipa tree over there. It's similar to that, but a different leaf, you know. Okay. okay. Nipa hut, and then it had the cow dung floor. You know, do you, do you, do you use cow dung floor here? Not here, but it uses other places. In this but it's country. very healthy. Yes. I yeah. slept on it a few times. Yeah. You know, it's really good for your health. Ah. Yeah, because when you take the cow dung and you mix it with the water, and you pour it on the ground, it makes like a rubber mat. Yes. But in fact, it gives you vitamins, and it helps uh, to d defend against uh, certain diseases. Wow. Everything God made is good. Wow. I used to say mass there in the little Nipah hut. Uh, it was one of my regular places, and uh, you know, and it was a small place. But they, but in India, they love speakers. Yes. So it was a small place. We had like uh, 20 people at the mass. And the speakers were the size of... <laughs> and so I have to have a microphone. There's 20 people. <laughs> and the Nipah hut is about as big as that one. I mean, a little bit bigger. And then, the, but the, there's no room for the people because the speakers. And then they turn the volume on and everybody within 25 kilometers can hear the mass. <laughs> but <laughs> you have to have a loud... Oh, yes, we can so, but in any case, but we, 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 we've we got, you're helping others when you're doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're persevering, and he helps the priests. Mm -hmm. And you don't give up, you keep pushing, mm -hmm. keep pushing, and God will bless you. And it's saving the chip people of your village, and other people in the world. <laughs> other people in the world. Because we don't, we're not, remember we're Catholics. You have to love the people of America, too. You have to love the people of China. These poor people being murdered in Afghanistan right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's horrible. Absolutely terrible, right? Yes. And we love them all, and we want to help them. Yeah. And that makes us grow. Yeah. But anyway, I know we have to go. Let me give you a blessing. Yes. Okay. Moses, yeah, right oh, excuse me, you got to finish yes. it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you Just go. now, we welcome you. Right. Thank you so much. And thank God, especially for the little prayer that we're saying. That he has now answered by your coming is a glorious crown that we have gotten. Thank you and welcome. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. So let me give a blessing here. Well, we'll give a double whammy. Two blessings. Okay. 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 Benedicto Deo de Botanis. Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen. And God bless you then. Remember, know you're encouraging many people throughout the world. You're helping many people. Amen. So keep up the fight and uh, don't give up, all right? Yes. And my, father, my old Irish pastor, he was a hot tempered. He used to say, Keep the faith. Don't keep the faith. Spread it. Spread the faith. <laughs> right? okay. So remember, spread the faith, okay? Don't give up on us, my love. Okay, we won't. Right? Okay. okay.